Well, hi there. Happy to be with you again today. And you can be happy in this life. You can be more optimistic. You can train your mind to see the positive aspects of life and your mind that is often so stressed out and full of negative thoughts, you can train your mind to see the positive aspects of your today and your tomorrow. And we, we've looked together over these past couple of weeks how living happy means experiencing positive emotions. It's a state of being and it's also a choice. Like Abraham Lincoln said, most folks are as happy as they make up their minds to be. Now, I need to say that I'm not pretending that you can control your depression or your anxiety by choice. What I am saying is experiencing positive emotions is a choice. And when you make that choice to experience positive emotions, that eventually will have a great impact on worry or anxiety or anguish or depression. You can be happy. You can be happy no matter the season of your life. You know, the, uh, the writer Anton Chekhov said, people don't realize whether it's winter or summer when they're happy. So I wanna help you again today to experience more often these positive emotions. And one of the ways we can do that is by receiving revelation, by receiving revelation from God. We looked at that last week, receiving something from Him that we couldn't know and something that is going to, to build our lives. But another way is when we trust, and that's today's subject. You can be happy when you trust. You know, it's written, happy are those who trust in the Lord. I'm not talking about trusting whatever. You've got to be careful that what you're trusting in is worthy of your trust. You're not going to sit on a chair with a broken leg. You know, there's a lot of weird ideas, a lot of weird philosophies, and a lot of even religious claims out there. You got to make sure that what you're trusting is, is worthy of your trust and worthy of the value of who you are in your life. So, God he is worthy of your trust. He's worthy of your, your trust, whether it be for your present needs, whether it be trusting in all that he says, whether it be trusting his, for his strength when you're going through difficult times. He is worthy of your trust at all times, the tough times and the happy times. So are you trusting him with your life? You know, that's the question I have for you. Are you trusting him fully with your life? Even when life just seems to make no sense. A number of years back, Marcy and I got to visit Corey Ten Boom's house in Amsterdam. You remember the story. Uh, Corey Ten Boom, along with her father and her sister, uh, had made a hiding place, uh, a room in their home to hide the Jews from the Nazis during the Second World War. They were eventually uh, ratted out and uh, arrested, sent to concentration camps. And Cory Ten Boom writes in her book, The Hiding Place, how the, the whole adventure of the house, but also how she found hope in the concentration camp as she trusted in God. And Cory Ten Boom liked to say, Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. You know, we're happy when we can trust God with our lives and when we can trust in his goodness. You know, we're happy. There's a happiness that comes when we trust in how good he is because he is the author of goodness and happiness. He's not the author of, of disaster or trouble. Lydia Brownback, the author, says, the only way we will learn to trust God is by getting to know God. That's why we read in, in the Psalms, you, O God, are strong, and you, O God, are loving. Now, for many, 
That may mean changing our mentality, how we see God, the way we think of him, the way we analyze information about him. Remember last week we talked about anchoring and how we can uh, be sort of stuck to an original idea um, and and that first information we received has trained our minds to see something in a certain way. And, And we really need now to look through the lens of faith in God, trust in God, trust in his goodness. And we will see things, often the very same things, we'll see them differently and we'll react differently. So I'm talking about trusting him, trusting that he is good, that he is for you, that he loves you unconditionally, that he loves you intentionally, that he loves you passionately, He knows you better than you know yourself. He knows the beginning from the end. And, you know, it's it's written in, uh, in the Psalms, you abound in love to all those who call on you. So you can trust him and his goodness. Today I'd like to show you a a short, short video clip that helps us understand our capacity to receive and process information. Now the instructions are very simple. You'll see it on the video clip. Here we go. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the basketball. How many passes did you count? The correct answer is 15 passes. But did you see the gorilla? We can be so focused on what's happening uh, around us that you know the Lord himself could show up and we would miss it in technical jargon that's called inattentional blindness so we really need to train our minds to recognize his goodness to celebrate that goodness to be convinced of that goodness and when you do that you will know a new level of happiness I love what the Apostle John says. He says, we know the love of God and we have believed the love of God. You know, it's one thing to come to know that God loves you. It's another thing to believe it. The facts are there, but now you need to put your faith in it. You need to trust that God loves you. He sent his only son to die in your, in your place. It's time now to believe and to trust uh, Jesus as the savior of your life, to trust him for eternal life. So you can trust his goodness. And then you also need to trust who you are, to trust in yourself. You know, to to trust uh, who you are in him, but also who you are to him who you are for him. We saw last week how Father God said to Jesus at his baptism in water, you are my beloved son. You are the object of all my affection. And last week we saw how when we see revelation of how God sees us, what God thinks of us, there's there's a level of happiness there. But it's one thing to receive revelation from God. It's another thing to believe it. It's another thing to trust what he says about us. To to put our faith and confidence in what he says. And to shut our ears to whatever anybody else might say about us. 
you know, uh, the businessman Richard Branson, uh, when he was very young in the 1970s, he started a small record shop in London. Uh, then he founded Virgin Records, which actually started as a mail order company uh, to buy uh, records. Uh, after success with his record label, he then got into transportation with trains, uh, cruise ships, uh, airlines, uh, rockets, and now he's, of course, one of the pioneers in uh, space tourism. He's involved with the development of the Hyperloop. Uh, did I mention that Richard Branson is dyslexic? Another famous individual said, after a while, you learn to ignore the names people call you and just trust who you are. And that's a quote from Shrek. You know, many have an opinion about themselves that's just not according to reality, certainly not to God's reality. Now, maybe when you were young, you heard parents or others around you saying that you were good for nothing, you'd never amount to anything, you'd never do anything well in this life. Maybe people laughed at you. Maybe, maybe you ha lived some sort of difficulty or failure and you interpreted that as confirmation. Yep, there we go. I'm just not worth it. I'm just a failure. I'm just no good. And it's time to change that. It's time to change what you're thinking. It's time to quit focusing on one thing and look at what's coming to you from the Lord so that you can trust in who you are. You can trust in what God says about you. And then you're going to want to try something new once again. You're going to have new trust and confidence to do something new. And you know, there's a, a verse that says, with God, we shall do valiantly, or with God's help, we will do mighty things. Uh, because it's not just having trust in who you are, but it's also having trust in God who's with you. So it's with God, we will do mighty things. It's time to trust who you are, who God says you are, and trust that he is with you in what you're going to do. When we buy a Superman cape, I don't know when the last time you bought one is, but Superman capes come with a warning that's either stitched into the material or it comes in the packaging that says, this cape does not actually help you to fly. Because if you give a Superman cape to an eight or nine year old, um, chances are that not too far down the road, you'll find him up on the roof ready to jump off. He'd never do that, except that now he has got this cape on and he's convinced that with that, he's going to be able to do it. We need to understand that God is with us. And when we know that he's with us, when we trust that he's with us, we're going to be ready to do things that we would never attempt on our own. And the fear of failure will keep you from trying. And the fear of failure is often the fear of what others will think of me if it doesn't work out. But when we know that we are loved, when we know that God is with us, we are able to go ahead. Richard Branson, once again, he says this, failure is not having taken the risk not having tried. If you try something and it doesn't work, you have not known failure, you have learned by, by the experience. And failure is a wonderful form of education. He goes on to say, if you're not taking risks, you're not going to achieve anything and sometimes you're going to fall flat on your face. Failure is not giving it a go. Listening to other people's opinions would have meant that Richard Branson never accomplished very much in his life, correct? Well, to uh, finish off today, I want to look at the results of another study. We could call it Back to the Future. It's published in a book 
entitled Counterclockwise, Mindful Health and the Power of Possibility, published in 2009 by Dr. Ellen Langer. And uh, she recounts the results of a study she did in 1979, where she took a group of men and put them in a situation. They were taken to a retreat center, and for one week, these men, in 1979, had to live as if it was 1959. All of these men were 75 years of age at the time. So she brought them to this house, all prepared to look like they were living in 1959 when they were 55 years old. Everything from the, the decorations to the uh, furniture, uh, to the choice of music available, the Time and Life magazines that were on the table uh, were, you know, 1959. Uh, they were instructed that they had to talk about current events as if they were in 1959. So, you know, Eisenhower is president and, and, and the whole thing. And for one week, these men lived as if they were 20 years previous. They, they even had a, uh, a wardrobe set out for them where these men, each one of them, uh, had clothes from 1959. Now the goal of this scientific study was to prove that our mental construction that, that we have, in other words, the way we see ourselves, it will play a direct role even in aging. And Dr. Ellen Langer believed that she could prove that she could change the felt age of these men. So before the one week experiment, these men took a number of tests on various aspects, physical aspects that we believe will diminish with age. So strength, posture, uh, cognitive ability, uh, short-term memory. What was I saying? Oh yeah. Um, and then at the end of this week, the men took another round of tests and almost all the men significantly improved their scores in every category. They were they had more flexibility, had better posture, uh, they had more strength in their, in their hands, they, even their vision improved uh, on average by 10%. Their memory scores, their intelligence scores uh, improved, and even their physical appearance pr improved. We show, they showed uh, photos of these men uh, to a, 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 an independent group who had no idea what this, uh, this study was all about. And they were asked to guess the age of each man. Then photos were taken of the men after the one week experience and photos were shown to a totally different independent group and were asked once again to guess the ages of the men. And the guessed age went down three years for the men involved in this test group. Which only proves what the actress Drew, Mar Drew Barrymore says, I can assure you happiness is the best makeup. Our reality uh, depends greatly on the eyes through which we see that reality. So imagine if you could see through the eyes of God. Imagine if you could see your life and your circumstances surrounded by the thoughts of God. These men were surrounded by everything that, that cried out 1959. Imagine living every day of your life surrounded with the thoughts of God toward you and how he sees you. And I ask you, how do you see yourself? And I ask you, how does God see you? So many studies are out there that talk about how when people believe in themselves, 
believe in their potential, they can produce so much more. They can uh, attempt and see great success in so many aspects of their life. So two things I'd like to ask you this week. First of all, take some time and think about, even name someone uh, who believed in you, or maybe someone who believes in you now. What, what impact did that have in your life when you were with that person who believed in you? What did it change for you? What were you able to do? What were you able to attempt because of that person's influence? And the second thing, this week, think of something you would like to do. You'd like to try. It, it, it's, it's the time, it's now. Let's, let's take that new risk. Let's put in the necessary effort, but let's believe. Let's trust in who God says we are and trust that God is with us. So you can trust God, first of all, with your life then trust God with, uh, with the fact that, that He's good, with the fact that He wants the best for you. And then trust what He says about you. So trust who you are. Be comfortable with that. And then trust that God is with you. And go out and take that risk. So may God richly bless you with this. And I'll look forward to seeing you real soon.